There are two types of loops in MATLAB or Octave. The first one is a for loop. A for loop you use when you know the number of times that you need to cycle through and repeat the loop. The second one is a while loop. Now a while loop is to continue looping until a certain condition is met. So you could continue indefinitely until you hit a certain condition and then you continue on with the rest of your code. So let's go down through some examples of how to write loops. Uh, we have a first one, we'll see how a loop changes. Okay, we could change the number eight to something else if we wanted to. Here's a while loop. All right, and this one is gonna print out while x is greater than or equal to five. Now, in this loop, we have x becoming one less each cycle. So let's run this and think about what's gonna happen. I think the very first thing it's gonna do is gonna print out eight and then seven and then six. But let's see if it also prints out five. Okay, so it printed out five as well. And that's because it was greater than or equal to. If I just put greater than, it's not gonna print out five. It'll end on six. Because once it hits five, it, this condition will be false. All right, so we can also simplify the x equals x minus one to x minus equals one. We can also do the same thing for plus equals, multiply equals, and divide equals. All right, so here's an example where x is gonna be equal to 15. Another thing that you can do is in a while loop, you can put the double equal sign to say if it's going to be equal. You can't use the single equal sign because that's an assignment operator where x would be assigned to be equal to zero. But you wanna compare x and zero, and if they're true, then that is going to return a true, and it's going to continue looping. All right, so let's go ahead and try other code, a while loop while x is zero. And we can do a second nested loop, so we can put loops inside of loops. And I'll put a third loop in there as well. So again, you wanna to try to think, how is this gonna flow through this program? We're going to have the first while loop, x is gonna be zero. So it's gonna enter here and display zero. Then I'm gonna add one to it, and then it's gonna continue this loop, it's going to increment a couple times, but then it's going to be higher than zero, so this loop is going to end. And then it's going to go down to the third loop. So let's just see what happens. The first loop is zero. The second loop right here went one, two, and three. And then it went down to the third loop to go four and five. All right, now let's go to four loops instead. For loops are when you already know the number of times the loop should repeat. A while loop is when you don't know the number of times to cycle through the instructions when you start. Okay, so your formatted is uh, for i equals the beginning number and then the ending number. Let's go ahead and just try this. This is the echoes in a canyon where you call out hello, and then you hear the repeats, hello, 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 as it gets quieter, okay? So here we go, echoes in the canyon, I have five. So it's gonna repeat, and so I said i equals one to five, and it's gonna display hello that many times. And we can also use this iterator called i, and we can name that something else if we wanted to, and go from start to stop. Okay, and we can also use a third number in here, so that's one to five, and we can display i, but we can also put another number right in between it, and that's gonna be how many times it increments by. So by default, if you leave it out, it's like it's a one. It's just gonna increment by one each time, but you can change that to two, or negative two, or whatever increment you'd like. Okay, so let's look at the first loop. We did one to five. That's pretty straightforward. Loop two, we incremented by twos up to nine. 
And then loop 3 is going to be down from 10 to 0 because we incremented by negative 2. Okay, let's go on to the first activity for you to work on. Create a for loop that prints out each letter of your name backwards. Okay, we have a character array. And this function is going to, uh, you're going to find, okay, I'll just have you start with that, for i and 1 to length of your name. So I'm going to put my name in here. There we go. And it's going to print out one at a time. If I want to print those backwards. All right, so I can do that a couple different ways. I could either say, oh, let's see, length. Let's see if this works. Okay, almost worked. I think I need to subtract one. Is that right? No, uh, add one. There I go. I could do it that way. Or I could keep I here and then just go from length. Okay, and do negative 1 to 1. And that would give me the same thing. All right, so go ahead and put your name in there and um, see if you can make it print out backwards. All right, for the next one, we're going to use the temperature control lab. when, And we're going to run the code that turns on the heaters. Um, you can feel them getting hot. Don't touch them. But you can also observe the thermochromic paint. It's going to turn pink or red when they go over 37 degrees Celsius. Okay, go back to lesson six or lesson five. Both of those have some of the TC lab functions if you don't remember them. This problem statement is to make a while loop that blinks on and off the hot LED light. If the temperature gets above 28 degrees Celsius, then turn the light on and turn off and disconnect the lab after three seconds. So it's also useful to print the temperature to see if the program works. Okay, so I want you to try this first, but if you can't get it or need a little bit of help, also walk through it here. Okay, the very first thing that I'll do is clear lab, just in case I had a bug in my code and I need to restart. So lab equals TC lab. All right, and then I want to make a while loop. Okay, the current temperature, temperature equals lab dot t1. And so while t is less than, I guess I don't even need the lab dot t1. While lab dot t1 is less than 28, then I'm going to have it, uh, let's see, we need to turn on the heater first as well. Okay, well, it's less than 28, then I want to blink the LED. All right, I'll do that by saying LED on, and then I'll pause for 0 0.1 seconds, and then I'm going to turn the LED off. All right, and I will pause for 0 0.1 seconds again. All right, so that is going to uh, blink the LED. Um, all right, and then what I want to do is, uh, let's see, the next thing is if it does get above 28, then I'm going to exit out of this while loop and then do some ending conditions. All right, so I'll do Q1 off and also LED on. Then I will pause for three seconds and then turn everything off and clear lab. Okay, so that's the ending sequence right there uh, after the while loop. So let's just see if it works. Oh, I need also want to print out, let's do this. Let's do f print f and uh, t1. And I'll print out two decimal places. And let's make that lab.t1, just so we can see it as it's running. OK, so it's running now. And 
I probably should have um, uh, put a semicolon here. All right. And it looks like inside that while loop, it's not printing out as it goes. Uh, but we'll go ahead and see the temperatures after it's done. And I probably should have put a return character there as well. Let me just see if this will run again. It's going to be a little bit too hot. So I'm going to have to raise that temperature because it's only going to run once. It's not even going to uh, run in there because it's above. Okay, so let's just raise that to uh, 35 degrees. Okay. Okay, so it's going to run. The LED is blinking right now. And and let's see what comes out. And it's still heating up. I can see the thermochromic paint getting pink right now. And hopefully it'll make it to 35 degrees soon. Okay, that's degrees Celsius. All right, so you can see here are the temperatures as it was printing out. And you can see it made it up to 35. 0.04 and then cut out. Now the temperatures are just a little bit different because I sampled the temperature here. It's a little bit different than the one here. Those might have been off just a little bit. So if you want to fix that, you could have set you know, T equals lab dot T1. And then if T is less than 35, printed T uh, just so you can see the, oops, I messed that up. And then uh, T equals lab dot T1, just so they're both using the same T value. All right, the next one, we want to make a for loop that makes the LED percent go all the way from 100 to zero in steps of one. Include a 0.1 second pause in between each step with pause 0.1. Okay, let's go ahead and just clear lab and we'll do lab equals TC lab again. Now let's go ahead and make a for loop for I in, uh, for I equals 100, negative one down to one. Okay, so there's our negative one step. And then in here, we're gonna do lab dot LED and we'll set that equal to I. And there's our end and then we'll clear lab. Okay. That's going to go really fast because I don't have a pause in there. So let's just get a connect. And then uh, there you can see the values that got printed out for the LED. But if you wanted to, you could put a pause in there of 0, 1 or 0. 0.1 just so you could see the LED intensity kind of go down uh, a little bit more gradually. Okay, and that'll take about 10 seconds to complete. And then it'll just print out. Uh, the LED because I didn't put a semicolon here. Okay, that's it for loops. Uh, remember while loops and for loops. While loops are, if you don't know how many times to do the loop until you hit a certain condition, and then for loops are for when you do know the exact number of conditions or the steps that you're going to be using in your loop.